we're going to be talking about sticky turbo, sticking vanes, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, on the 6.7 turbos, they're very similar to the old 6.0 where they can have problems with the vane sticking. But something else that's different with the 6.7, it actually runs slightly lower oil pressure than the 6.0, which almost makes them more prone to sticking. But it's not actually the vanes that are typically sticking. When we get turbos back from people complaining about sticking, whether it's one of our turbos, we uh, do a lot of turbo work for other people and or stock turbos, the vanes are usually fine. There's a gears inside the bearing housing that mesh. And what we find is sometimes there's a few little tight spots when the gears are meshing and it'll get stuck on that position. So if your veins are stuck, sometimes a little uh, love tap can get them unstuck. Now we're gonna go over multiple ways of how to tell where your veins are stuck and what to do with them. So if your veins are stuck, close. Typically you will have a constant whistle, high boost, low power. Uh, you can actually listen to the exhaust and if you listen while I rev it, you'll hear the veins are stuck closed. It's a hair dryer whistling noise constantly. Listen to this. Now, if your veins are stuck open, it will be completely the opposite. It'll be a low rumble, like a, with very little hair dryer sound, very little whistle sound. That means your veins are stuck open. Okay, now, depending on whether they're stuck open or closed, it's still the same procedure, but it helps to know which way they're stuck. Something else I want to point out is that if your veins are stuck and you turn the truck off and then turn the truck back on and they cycle fine, your veins weren't stuck. The PCM is commanding them to hold a certain position because it's not seeing something it likes. You either have a boost leak, an exhaust leak, a sensor out of whack, or a tuning issue. I'll repeat that again. If the veins stick and stop working while you're driving and by turning the key off, and turning it back on and starting the truck, if they start cycling again, there's no mechanical issue. You've got something else wrong. A boost leak, an exhaust leak, a sensor issue, or a wiring issue. It's not an actual internal turbo issue. What's happening is the PCM is seeing some sort of parameter it doesn't like. Whether that's a boost leak and it's trying to command more boost and it's not reaching that, whether it's an exhaust leak, whether you have a dirty sensor, an unplugged sensor, a tuning issue, Whatever it is, it's usually associated with the P0299 code and the PCM is locking the veins. Now back to talking about what to do if the veins are stuck. Uh, you can give a turbo a little love tap. I know this sounds weird. People have done it on six liters for years. It's the same thing on the 6.7. Sometimes tapping on the VGT cavity can get it unstuck. Now depending on which way the veins are stuck depends on which way you want to do it. So by looking at your monitor or your uh, easy link or whatever you're looking at, if it's constantly commanding 14 and you hear a loud whistle and it won't go away, that means your veins are stuck closed and the PCM is trying to open it. If you hear no whistle at all and you have a really high number like 40, 50, 60, 70, that means the PCM is commanding the veins closed but they're stuck open. So what you need to do is climb up there and use a hammer. I like to use a little air chisel. You can use a hammer with a punch. Whatever it is, you need to beat on the back of the turbo a couple times while plugging and unplugging the VGT solenoid. Or you can command the veins open and close constantly if you have an IDS. Now I'll top up there and see what this looks like. All right, the two main areas you need to focus on is the back of the turbo right here, which is where the VGT cavity is. That's where the gears and the plunger are located and the VGT solenoid, which is on this side of the turbo. If your veins are stuck closed, you want to unplug the VGT solenoid and tap on the turbo until you hear them open. If the veins are stuck open, you want to make sure to leave the VGT solenoid plugged in and tap on the back of the turbo until you hear the veins close. This is my tool of choice. I like to use just a little air hammer with a, a flat end on it. You don't need a sharp chisel or anything. You just stick it in right near the back. Now you do this while the truck is running, but uh, you wouldn't be able to hear me doing it if uh, the truck was on. So with the truck running, you just stick it right here in. That right there will typically undo whatever it was doing. Now once you do get the veins cycling, if you have an IDS, you can command the veins all the way open or close. But what I prefer to do is just take the VGT solenoid and unplug it and plug it back in a bunch of times and listen to the veins open and then close. Open and then close. Keep doing that if you get stuck. 
stuck, grab out the air chisel, hammer it again. And then you want to open it and close it. What you're actually doing when you're doing that is you're cycling those gears. And if there's a little piece of carbon buildup, uh, a tiny piece of metal, maybe the gears are just super tight. When you're doing that and you're meshing them, it'll kind of wear them in, wash out whatever's in there. It'll clearance those gears and then it'll typically start working. It's very common on brand new Ford turbos and brand new Garrett turbos to have that issue with meshing. And then once you get the vein cycling, you just go for a spin. Sometimes you need to repeat the process two or three times, but typically it'll go right away and it'll never come back. So this is what's inside the turbo. There's a plunger that moves back and forth, and there's a gear that rides on it like this. And the gear goes back and forth as the plunger moves. And sometimes it'll get stuck, typically all the way open or all the way closed. And what happens when you tap on it is it just barely moves it and then they start cycling again. So what you wanna do is plug and unplug it a bunch of times so it sits there and cycles open and closed. The issue is typically not in the unison ring and veins, it's typically located in the gear section. And so if you just tap right there on the turbo, it can get it moving. Sometimes you can have an airlock on one side or the other because the turbo hasn't been ran for very long. It also is because these gears have a very tight tolerance and we've looked at them underneath the microscope and seen that there's actual burrs or uh, not finished spots. And what happens is the gears get jammed in there and it's hard to get it moving again. And once you move it back and forth a few times, it clearance itself and then it's fine. So you can actually see the back side of the plunger in there and I'm gonna operate it manually so you can see what we're doing. So here's the veins. There's the cam that operates the veins and then there's the gear and the plunger which you can't see inside the turbo. So as I move it in and out, you can see the veins cycling. Now when it's maxed out all the way one way or all the way the other, it doesn't have as much a mechanical advantage to get the veins started. So that's why they typically max out all the way open or all the way closed. And when you are hitting on the turbo right here, you're just jiggling it around just a little bit, whether there's an air pocket in there or whether those gears are bound up just a little bit, you just barely get it moving and then it'll typically cycle just fine after that. So what you're doing when you're tapping on the back of the turbo is you're jiggling those gears and trying to get them moving again. And then when you plug and unplug it, plug and unplug it, you are manually cycling those veins back and forth. What sometimes happens is uh, gunk, uh, carbon buildup, a thick chunk of oil. I've seen tiny pieces of metal make it through the system and the gear gets jammed and it's stuck there. And when you tap the back of the turbo, they'll keep going and moving. And then if you keep cycling it, if there's a slight clearance issue because the gears are too tight, it'll wear in. Or if there's any gunk there, it usually washes off. Uh, you might have to repeat the process two or three times, but typically after that, they never come back.